I'm Judy Muller, Professor Emerita at the Annenberg School of Journalism. For network coverage of the coronavirus pandemic, we actually have two Cronkite winners. The first is CNN's coverage of the coronavirus outbreak in China. David Culver's reporting was among the first to emerge from Wuhan before the outbreak was declared a pandemic. The 24 hours that Culver, producer Yang Xiong, and photojournalist Natalie Thomas spent in Wuhan on the eve of lockdown provided essential contacts for months of reporting from Beijing, starting with a two-week quarantine. They were the only foreign TV network team to speak with whistleblower Dr. Li Wenliang. Two weeks later, Culver was live on the air to report news of Li's death when that news broke. The jury recognized CNN's exceptional real-time access. They were right where and when they should have been. Let's watch a clip. Just stepped aboard a train, leaving Beijing. We're headed to Wuhan. That's considered the ground zero of this coronavirus. Concerns over the spread of a deadly illness are rising. As soon as we boarded the train from Beijing, most faces covered. Just about everyone traveling home for the Lunar New Year. Strict screening upon arrival. One by one, passengers step through a thermometer check to make sure they are not bringing a fever with them. Typically, coronavirus symptoms include a cough, possibly fever, which can last for several days. For those with a weakened immune system, there's a chance the virus could cause a much more serious respiratory tract illness like pneumonia or bronchitis. Health officials now believe the Wuhan coronavirus can be transmitted from one person to another. Face masks are spiking in demand, so much so that a search through Chinese online retailers shows some stores are running low and several more are sold out. So this is where authorities believe the source of the coronavirus is. It's the wildlife and seafood market. And you can perhaps see over there, it's cordoned off. You've got police at all the corners. It is so sensitive that within minutes of us arriving and recording, security asked us to stop filming. So police just asked us to leave the market area. They said we have to get official permission. And once we get that permission, we can come back. The reality is we won't be granted that permission. So instead, we're able to drive now through it, but you can see they've closed off the entire market area is going on. No business whatsoever. It's just empty. Accepting the award, CNN's David Culver. A strange irony in that if it were not for this outbreak, we'd likely be gathered in person for this event. And yet, if it were not for this outbreak, my team and I would not have been recognized with this incredible honor. Amidst a still uncertain time, it's humbling and comforting and it makes being so far from family and friends back in the U.S. a bit more palatable. I am the one accepting this award, but it must be stressed our work in Wuhan, hours before the lockdown, and subsequent reporting from quarantine in Beijing and here in Shanghai would not have been possible without the tireless hours put in by my CNN team, particularly producer Yong Shong and photojournalist Natalie Thomas. It is thanks to their efforts and determination we were able to share with the world a glimpse of what was then a mysterious illness on the brink of becoming this historic pandemic. Thank you for this award. I had a chance to talk with David about covering the pandemic's early days in China. The full interview is online at cronkiteawards.org. Here's a clip. And so early on, we started to see in Chinese local media reports about Dr. Li and what he was going through. And it was on my team, Yong and Natalie, who in the midst of our quarantine, which was not, by the way, part of government policy at that point, it was our CNN leadership saying, we think you need to do 14 days away from everyone else, keep to yourselves and do that in a hotel. Don't let anyone in or out of the room. And that's what we did. We decided to also make that an opportunity to news gather. And so it was at all hours and, and Young found a contact for Dr. Lee, first started messaging him, said, are you available to talk? When he pulled him up on the phone, the only thing we could really hear in the midst of a few words was heavy breathing and a lot of coughing. And so we recorded what we could from that. The next step was Yong continuing a conversation with him via WeChat messages. 
and he was incredibly frank about what he was going through, what his efforts were in trying to sound the alarm. He really didn't want to make a big deal about it. He was just telling friends and family, hey, there's something going around. You should be aware of this. That was screenshotted. That went viral and that got him in a lot of trouble. And he showed us even the paperwork he had to sign to say to local police, he will stop spreading rumors about what was happening there. And when Young made contact with him, you know, there's always a, a professional relationship. But at the same time, here was a guy 34 years old who was conveying all he was doing in that moment as he was clinging to life at the same time to try to save other lives. And when we finally were able to air his story, we were the first foreign TV network to have been in touch with him. Uh, six days later, we find out that he passes away and, and that he dies from this disease. And so it was really a, a remarkable experience, but at the same time on a personal level, I think it impacted us all quite deeply. Is there a question that you wished you'd asked him? I don't know if there's so much a question that I would have wanted to ask him, um, but rather I would have liked to have met him in person, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I, I would have wanted to, to to see this individual who was really just uh, a man who served as a doctor and really that's all he wanted to do and was expecting a child and his uh, young wife was at home waiting for him. And ultimately, you know, here was a guy who was told to go back to work and it was going back to work in the hospital that he contracts this disease, even transmits it to his own parents who fortunately survived, but it took his own life. So I don't know if a question so much, Judy, is I would have liked to met the guy.